Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel and not a playthrough or an episode, however, a very highly requested reaction video to the background story of Kratos and essentially the whole Greek saga. Um, for those of you that are new here, first of all, welcome on in. My name is Shay and we have been covering a lot of God of War lately on the channel. I have become a bit of an addict. I started with 2018 and it was such an amazing experience and I really loved the characters and I loved Kratos and I loved Atreus and I just loved the whole story and a lot of the comments were, you know, you wouldn't love him so much if you knew his past. And there were some moments in 2018 where I felt that the community was quite emotional about those moments and for me it was not no big deal. And I think it's because I didn't have the background story. So. We did a poll on the channel and a lot of you actually voted to go back to the OG games, which is what we did. So I'm fresh out of God of War 3 and we are about to start Ragnarok. Uh, however, I decided I didn't want to play the non-numbered games just because I don't want to become an exclusive God of War channel. I, I really love the franchise. However, there's a lot of other games I do want to bring into the community um, that I'm excited to play. So I decided not to play them for now. I may play them on stream at some point. I'm not sure. But I did hear that there was some really cool lore and a lot of good background info. So we're going to be watching a video that does essentially a little breakdown. Hopefully it gives me some information on the non-numbered games that I haven't played yet. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited. Without further ado, let's just get into it. PS4, we see series protagonist Kratos taking on a new mythological foe, so we here at Suggestive Gaming figured now would be a good time to go over Kratos' first set of opposition, the Greek Pantheon. So strap yourself in because this is what you need to know about the entire original God of War saga, from start to finish. Our story begins with the Primordials, the very first beings to come into existence, fighting for control of their creation, Earth. This war ravished the world and eventually the three Furies were born from the rage and power of the battle. The Furies were then tasked to honor oaths between the various beings of Earth. Their first victim was the Hecatoncheres, Aegeon, who had broken an oath to one of the first gods, Zeus. To make an example of Aegeon, the Furies petrify his body into the prison of the damned for anyone who dared to break an oath in the future. Eventually, the Furies began to take guidance from the god of war, Ares, who convinced them to join him in a siege on Olympus. Believing their forces to be too weak, the queen of the Furies, Electo, birthed a son with Ares, hoping to create a powerful warrior. This warrior, Orcos, proved to be a failure in Ares' eyes and was disowned. Wow. However, the Furies decided to use him as their oath keeper. With Ares still in search for his warrior to help take over Olympus, Zeus hears of a prophecy foretelling his death at the hands of one of his sons, a marked warrior. Ares is then tasked to find and dispose of this threat. Ah. Ares discovers Deimos, a young Spartan who bore a birthmark all over his body and storms the city to capture him. Dur Wait, Deimos has the uh, marks all over his body? Uh, we, we know that's uh, Kratos' brother, but Kratos has the marks on his body too. His death at the hands yeah, of the one of his warrior, sons, I a marked thought warrior. That that was Ares is then tasked to red. find and dispose of this threat. Ares discovers Deimos. So Deimos is the little one there. I'm guessing the older one is Kratos, maybe? Um, but Deimos has all the markings. A young Spartan who bore a birthmark all over his body and storms the city to capture him. During the kidnapping, Deimos' brother, another young Spartan by the name of Kratos, attempts to stop the god, but he is struck down, leaving a scar over his right eye. Oh, Ares okay. attempts to kill Kratos for this, but his sister, Athena, the goddess of war, convinces him to spare the boy. Deimos is then taken to the god of death, Thanatos, to prevent the prophecy and protect Zeus. Wait a minute, do you think Athena knew the whole time that Kratos would be the one to help her take over Olympus and that's why she spared Kratos? Maybe she knew? Kratos, tortured by his inability oh, to save him. Like, I have to pause it, sorry, because I really want to pay attention. That would have to be the ultimate manipulation I've ever heard of. Like, she knew from when Kratos was a child. Brother, vows to never fail like that again, and tattoos a replica of Deimos' birthmark on himself in remembrance. <gasps> Kratos' rage and pain remained with him as he became a leading member of the Spartan army, eventually marrying a Spartan woman named Lysandra, and the two have a daughter whom they name Calliope. Calliope unfortunately contracts a plague, which infects her skin and causes the Spartan authorities to decide for her to be thrown into a chasm and left to die. Kratos then sets off to find the cure for her disease, a mysterious element with the exceptional healing abilities called Ambrosia. Whoa. Unbeknownst to Kratos, the gods had a wager in which they selected various heroes whom they believed would be the first to obtain the Ambrosia. Kratos was chosen by Ares, likely due to their prior run-in in which Kratos displayed his resilience and bravery. After mm -hmm. battling the other gods' selected the heroes, Kratos fights a climactic battle with an army of barbarians 
barbarians and their leader, Ulrich, who was trying to retrieve the Ambrosia to heal his own father. Mm. Kratos eventually bests Ulrich and captures the Ambrosia, but at the cost of many of his men. Upon returning to Sparta, Kratos heals his daughter, and the king of Sparta bestows on him the title of captain. As captain of the Spartan army, Kratos leads his men to many victorious battles, often slaying scores of enemies with an increasing hunger for power, despite the wishes of his wife. Eventually, Kratos comes across a familiar enemy, the barbarian King Ulrich, who still blames Kratos for his father's death. So this barbarian is actually a key character in the God of War franchise, because not only was he in the comics, he was also in God of War 1, he made a comeback in God of War 2 as well. Kratos and his army are no match for the rebuilt barbarian army, and Kratos, moments away from death at the hands of Ulrich, calls out to Ares in desperation. Ares, seeing a candidate to overthrow Olympus, accepts Kratos' offer of loyalty and kills the barbarians in exchange. He then gives Kratos the Blades of Chaos, symbolizing his servitude to the god of war. Under Ares' loyalty... Could you imagine the amount of, like, toxicity to your mental health knowing that you're serving the god that killed your brother? That's insane. He, like, quite literally sold his soul to the devil. I mean, I know Ares wasn't really the devil, but that's crazy to me. I never knew that Ares killed his brother. Or maybe we found that out. It's kind of ringing a bell. Maybe we did find that out in God of War 1 or 2, but I don't remember that fact. Kratos slays many innocents, raises villages, and spreads chaos in the name of him. Under Ares' influence, Kratos slowly loses his humanity with every battle fought for the god. Soon, Kratos is tasked to raid a village of Athena's followers due to Ares' jealousy of Athena, whom their father Zeus favored. There, he encounters an oracle who warns Kratos of dark things awaiting him inside the city's temple. Kratos ignores this warning and enters the temple, blindly slaughtering those inside. However, afterwards, Kratos comes to realize that those inside the temple were none other than his beloved wife Lysandra and daughter Calliope. Ares reveals that he had transported them there secretly in order to sever Kratos' human ties and create the perfect warrior. Kratos leaves the bodies of his family inside the temple to burn, and as he exits, the oracle curses him, binding the ashes of his wife and child to Kratos' skin, forcing him to wear another reminder of his failures and turning him into the ghost of Sparta. Kratos then renounces his allegiance to Ares and breaks his oath, causing the Furies to hunt him down and torture him with endless illusions. Kratos then finds himself trapped in an illusion. Oh, okay, so he breaks his oath to the gods, and we know that, um... Oh, they touched on this earlier, but my old fish memory Ares is the son of one of the furies oh i think that's what they said at the very very beginning of the video um or related to one of the furies so they're basically haunting him for the rest of his life now because he broke his oath to the god and doesn't want to be the god of war anymore because the fact that he Ares tricked him into killing his family mm. of his former home in sparta orcos appears before him and helps him break the illusion using lysandra's necklace and ring Orcos then convinces Kratos to seek out Aletheia, the oracle at Delphi. He finds the oracle captured, but is unable to prevent her from being mortally wounded. Before her death, she informs Kratos that the only way he can be free of his oath to Ares would be to slay the Ults Enforcers, the Three Furies. Kratos returns to Orcos, who informs him of Ares' true intentions all along to use him to overthrow Zeus. With this knowledge, Kratos travels to Delos to slay the Furies. Upon his arrival, however, he is ambushed and captured by them, and they proceed to torture him in the prison of the Damned. Oh, After shit. two weeks of torture, one of the Furies leaves an opening for Kratos to exploit and escape his imprisonment. After various battles and illusions, Kratos is able to outsmart and outfight the Furies, slaying all three of them. Wow. After the death of the Furies, Kratos returns to his home in Sparta where he finds Orcos, who reveals to Kratos that while he had killed the Furies, they transferred Kratos' oath to him, keeping the bond with Ares intact. Orcos hands Kratos his blade and asks him for an honorable death in order to permanently end Ares' hold on them. Kratos complies, killing Orcos and burning his home with the former Oathkeeper's body still inside. No longer under servitude to Ares, Kratos dedicates his life to serving the gods of Olympus as their trusted warrior. After defeating an invading Persian army for the gods, Kratos appears before them to ask for his next task. Suddenly, however, he Why sees he the sun fall from the sky the gods, and they permanently end Ares' hold on them. He says them. that he doesn't, he, he, he's no longer now um, a servant to Ares, but then why would he continue serving the gods? I guess maybe he only thought Ares was the bad god? Kratos complies, killing Orcos and burning his home with the former Oathkeeper's body still inside. No longer under servitude to Ares, Kratos dedicates his life to serving the gods of Olympus as their trusted warrior. After defeating an invading Persian army for the gods, Kratos appears before them to ask for his next task. Suddenly, however, he sees the sun fall from the sky, enveloping the world in darkness. Mm. Kratos follows the last trace of light he can see to the temple of Helios. After speaking to Athena, Kratos concludes that Helios had been captured, allowing the god of dreams Morpheus to entrance other gods into a deep sleep, allowing him to take control of Greece. Mm. Inside the temple, Ios, Helios' sister, tasks Kratos to awaken her brother's 
fire steeds in order to find him. In return, she promises to relieve Kratos of his nightmares, which haunt him in the form of a melody his daughter used to play on her flute. He does this, and the steeds take him to Helios' location, the Underworld. There, he meets Sharon, the ferryman on the River Styx, who ultimately denies Kratos' passage, as it is not his time. Kratos engages him, but is knocked unconscious and thrown into Tartarus, the darkest depths of the underworld where the oh, Titans had been chained again. by Zeus. Upon waking, Kratos witnesses Atlas's chains broken and the Titan missing. Kratos fights his way through Tartarus, eventually climbing out to confront Charon once again. After defeating him, Kratos uses his fairy to follow Helios's light down the river Styx to a temple. There, Kratos sees his daughter upon the shore. He follows her inside, but instead finds Persephone, the queen of the underworld. Persephone reveals to Kratos that he can meet his daughter once again, and she is now residing in the Elysium Fields. Elysium Fields Persephone uh -huh, tells Kratos why. that to see his daughter, he must make a sacrifice to give up all of his weapons and powers given to him by the gods. Kratos does this, transferring his powers into the Forsaken Tree and regains his humanity. He reunites with his daughter, but the reunion is interrupted by Persephone, who reveals her true intentions. She reveals that it was her who released Atlas, whom she tasked with destroying the pillar that holds the Earth. She intends for this to kill everyone, including herself, to free her from her imprisonment by Hades as his wife. Huh. Kratos painfully makes the decision to give up his ability to see his daughter and regains his weapons from the tree. Why? Doing this, he once again becomes the ghost of Sparta and, against his daughter's wishes, takes off to stop Persephone. Oh, for Kratos finds fuck's sake, are you kidding me? He could have lived in eternal l happiness. I mean, if Persephone destroyed, if Persephone just wanted to die. And if she destroyed the pillar, she would have just destroyed the world above her. Would that have destroyed Elysium? Probably not. I mean, honestly, Kratos should have just taken, you know, the easy way out and just stayed down there with his daughter. Walked away from his daughter again because of the gods. Also got tricked to come down here because of one of the gods, uh, Helios' sister, too. She's the queen at the base of the pillar, insane. and she carries him to the top. There, the two engage in a final battle. During this battle, Persephone attempts to confuse Kratos and convince him to return to Elysium to be with his daughter. Kratos resists this, however, and Persephone orders Atlas to take care of him. Atlas does not get this chance, however, as Kratos chains the Titan to the ceiling of the underworld and returns to Persephone, besting her in battle and killing her. Her body explodes, destroying the pillar and leaving Atlas as the only thing holding the world together. Uh -huh, we saw Atlas, that. though defeated, Don't taunts Kratos too. as he remains a slave to the gods. True. Kratos accepts this fate as he can only hope that serving the gods will cause them to one day free him from his nightmares. Atlas then predicts to Kratos that they will meet again before Kratos leaves to return Helios to the sky. Weak and now knowing that his sins will never allow him to see his daughter again, Kratos falls from the chariot, landing on a cliff overlooking the Aegean Sea. Sometime after waking, Kratos is sent into the sea to kill a hydra and return peace to the waters. After doing so, he is approached by Athena, who asks Kratos to save her city, Athens, from her brother Ares, whose army is currently advancing. Kratos, seeing an opportunity to get revenge on Ares, agrees on the condition that the gods free him of his nightmares once and for all, as well as offer him a chance at redemption. Tricked again. Kratos enters Athens to find the town's oracle, who tells him that in order for a mortal to defeat a god, he must seek the power of Pandora's box, which is locked inside a temple constructed on the back of the titan Kronos, who Zeus cursed to wander the desert of lost souls for eternity. Kratos makes his way to the temple, encountering a mysterious gravedigger on the way. Inside the temple, Kratos solves several puzzles in order to find Pandora's box. However, Ares senses this so and throws a pillar Kratos. from Athens, impaling Kratos and killing him. Ares then arrives and steals the box as Kratos dies and returns to the underworld. However, with help from the gravedigger, who refers to Kratos as my child, he is able to climb from Hades and return to Athens. There, he opens Pandora's box and gains the power to confront Ares. After a battle, Ares tortures Kratos by forcing him to relive his family's death at his hands. Kratos resists this, however, and Ares is forced to strip the Blades of Chaos from Kratos' arms and kills the illusions of his family in front of him. Freed from the illusion, Kratos finds a nearby sword being used as an ornamental bridge and uses it to kill the God of War. The gods oh, praise man, Kratos for so killing the rebelling him. Ares. Kratos then asks Athena to finally free him of his nightmares. Athena then finally reveals to Kratos that while she can forgive his sins, his nightmares will stay with him forever. Kratos, feeling abandoned by the gods, climbs back to the cliffs overlooking the Aegean Sea. Wait, but if she forgives his sins, then can he not uh, die again and then go to Elysium? Because if she's a god, right? So if she forgives his sins, does that not mean that he's now purified and go back to Elysium? I don't understand that part. And feeling death as his only escape, throws himself off. However, Athena stops him at the bottom, claiming that there is now an empty throne upon Olympus. Kratos then enters a portal and claims his throne as the new god of war. I would never want to be still the god haunted of war. by his memories. Kratos decides to explore his past against Athena's wishes. He makes his way to the Temple of Poseidon in Atlantis. Poseidon attempts to stop Kratos, but he defeats his defenses Ew. and reaches the city. There, Kratos finds, much to his surprise, his mother, Callisto, dying on the ground. His mother? She reveals to him that his father is the one who brought her there, and that his brother Deimos. What? His mother? 
His mother, Callisto, oh, dying, dying on, the on the ground. She reveals to him that his father is the one who brought her there, and that his brother Deimos is still alive, but does not have much time. What? Before dying, she tells Kratos to seek out his brother in Sparta. Kratos then departs Atlantis, but not before encountering the Titan Thera, whom he frees, destroying the city in a flood. Kratos returns to Sparta, but on his way encounters and kills Thanatos' daughter, Arenes. Upon his arrival to the city, he is praised by its inhabitants, led by a young Spartan who gives Kratos his arms from when he was the commander of the Spartan army. Kratos goes to the Temple of Ares, and after encountering- Ooh, do you guys think that's the young Spartan, um, Atreus? The one that Atreus got his name from? In a spirit-like vision of his younger self, he learns that he must return to Atlantis to find Death's Domain. Upon returning, however, Kratos is stopped by a statue of Poseidon, inhabited by the god, who warns him that he will pay for sinking the kingdom of Atlantis. Kratos avoids the statue and makes his way through the ruins of the city, eventually coming across the Gravedigger once again, who yeah. cryptically warns Kratos not to alienate the gods. Kratos then finds the gateway to Death Domain. Inside, Kratos finds and frees his brother, who becomes enraged at him for seemingly forgetting about him for all this time. Thanatos arrives and intervenes, capturing Deimos and bringing him to the same cliff Kratos attempted to kill himself from. Kratos saves his brother and the two reconcile. Oh. Kratos gives Deimos his arms and the two fight Thanatos together. What? During the battle, Thanatos kills Deimos and Kratos avenges his brother by finally killing the God of Death. A broken Kratos then carries his brother up the mountain where the Gravedigger has prepared a grave for him. Kratos ponders what he has become and the Gravedigger answers, Death, the destroyer of worlds. Athena appears before him and attempts to elevate him to a full god. Kratos stops her, however, and returns to Olympus, claiming that the gods will pay for what they have done to Kratos and his family. As he leaves, Athena mythically refers to him as brother. The Gravedigger then buries Callisto next to Deimos and proclaims upon a third grave that now only one remains, as Kratos returns to his throne and plans his next move against the gods, mm. leading his Spartan army to conquer Greece. After launching this attack, Athena pleads with Kratos to stop. He claims to owe her nothing and turns his back on her to assist his army in the town of Rhodes. There, he spots an eagle, whom he believes to be Athena in disguise, whom robs him of his godly abilities, and instead infuses them into the Colossus of Rhodes, who comes to life and tries to kill Kratos. Zeus arrives mm. and offers Kratos the Blade of Olympus, which he once used to win the great war between the gods and the titans. Zeus urges Kratos to infuse the blades with his remaining godly powers, which renders him mortal once again, but allows him to destroy the Colossus from the inside. Upon doing this, however, Kratos is crushed by the Colossus's severed yes, hand. That part Determining was crazy. that he must retrieve the Blade of Olympus to get his immortality back, he slowly makes his way over to it, only to be stopped by Zeus, who reveals himself to be the eagle that stole Kratos' power, yes. in an attempt to kill him to stop him from overthrowing Zeus as he did with Ares. Zeus then stabs Kratos, killing him. While he is being dragged into the underworld once more, the mother of the Titans, Gaia, saves him and reveals that, that Kronos, Zeus's father, ate all of his children in an attempt to stop the prophecy that he would die at the hands of one of his sons. Zeus's mother, however, hid him on an island that was actually Gaia. Gaia raised the boy, but he grew vengeful and eventually sought to defeat the Titans, which yeah. he did by using the Blade of Olympus. That was Gaia offers to help Kronos exact revenge on the King of Olympus. Gaia gives Kratos the magical oh, horse Pegasus, and he escapes the underworld to find the Sisters of Fate in order to change his past Pegasus. and kill Zeus. Kratos flies to the island of creation, and after besting several powerful foes, including a risen Ulrich, he comes across Icarus, yeah, cool whom he too. strips of his wings, plummeting below the earth and landing upon Atlas. Originally refusing to help Kratos, still holding begrudgment over his imprisonment at the Spartans' hands, Atlas is eventually persuaded to help him kill Zeus. Atlas helps Kratos return to the surface, where he awakens the Phoenix and flies to the Temple of the Fates to meet oh, the sisters. Man, was such a good game. There he expresses his wishes, but the sisters deny him passage. Kratos then confronts the youngest sisters, Lachesis and Atropos, who attempt to take him back to his battle with Ares and force him to die by the god's hand in the past. He avoids this effort and traps the sisters in a mirror, then destroying it to seal them away for eternity. Yeah, that was a great Kratos battle. then makes his way to the eldest sister, oh, Clotho, so who operates the Loom of Fate. Kratos kills the final sister and takes control of the Loom to change his fate. He turns the threat of fate back to his death at the hands of Zeus and saves his past self by reclaiming the Blade of Olympus before Zeus has a chance now, to. Now, see, my question is as well, I put this, I, I think I mentioned this in the playthrough of God of War 2. I don't understand why he wouldn't have just gone back to the moment in time, I guess, when, I mean, now that I know more about him, I was going to say the moment in time when he killed his family, but you know what, now, now that I think about it, even if he went back really far, the gods forever would have hunted the marked soldier because that was the person who was going to take down Olympus. So I guess there was no spot really for him to go back to now that I understand the whole series. Um, yeah, where could he have gone really to stop this entire fate? There really was no way for him to stop this entire thing from happening. That's crazy. All he could have stopped was just, I guess, his own death at the hands of Zeus. Because if he went back far enough and stopped 
him killing um, his family um, from the illusions of Ares, he never would have been able to keep his family alive because the gods would have continued hunting them because they knew they got the wrong <clears throat> marked soldier. Hmm. Yeah, actually, everything's really coming together now that I've watched this the video. The two then engage in a battle until Zeus stuns Kratos a with a lightning storm. A lot of questions storm. are being answered. Kratos plays possum and pins Zeus before driving the blade of Olympus into the god's chest. Before he can kill him, however, Athena appears and intervenes to protect Olympus. That was crazy. Zeus attempts to escape, Kratos lunges at him with the blade, and Athena sacrifices herself by jumping in front of it, saving her father. Kratos asks Athena why she would do this, and she reveals that she did it to allow Zeus to stop the cycle of sons killing their fathers, finally revealing that Kratos is, in fact, a son of Zeus. Vowing to destroy Olympus, Kratos returns to the loom and turns back time all the way to the Great War. He calls out to Gaia, and they return to Kratos' time, where an injured Zeus is calling on his fellow gods to kill Kratos. Mm -hmm. The Titan army, led by Kratos, then storm Olympus with the intent to win the Great War once and for all. The Titans and Gods wage a very intense and bloody battle as Poseidon begins to take on Gaia. Kratos draws him into Gaia's grasp and is able to weaken him, eventually knocking him onto a platform and beating him before gouging his eyes out and snapping his neck, killing him and flooding the entire world. That was insane Kratos and the battle. Titans then make it to the top of Olympus and confront Zeus, who, anticipating their arrival, hits them with a blast of lightning, damages Gaia, and knocks her and Kratos off the mountain. Attempting to hang on, Kratos is then betrayed by Gaia, who lets him fall as he is no longer a use to them now that they have here. reached Zeus's throne. Betrayal. After falling once again to his death, Kratos makes his way through the river Styx, lamenting that he was used as a pawn by both the gods and the Titans. Yeah. He then reunites with a reformed Athena, who is willing to help Kratos from her new level of existence. Mm -hmm. He then realizes the goal of his final quest, extinguishing the flame of Olympus in order to finally defeat Zeus. To do this, however, he must find Pandora, the child of Pandora's box's namesake. Now, this is Kratos the moment makes where I thought that Athena was actually a master manipulator. It was in this moment in the game where i was like maybe athena isn't that great because in god of war one and two i thought i had the wrong impression and she was actually a really good god but now i'm seeing that or in that moment i thought why is she trying so hard to help us kill zeus when she just sacrificed herself to protect zeus in god of war two that part made no sense to me and now that i know the prequels to the god of war numbered games i learned that she told Ares to spare Kratos knowing that Kratos would be the one ultimately to remove Zeus from power because that was the prophecy so in the end is this really a story about Athena actually trying to get control and using Kratos as her pawn since day one way through Hades and eventually Crazy. finds Hades palace and the dead body of Persephone Hades arrives in the two battle before Kratos defeats the god, sealing his soul into his own weapons. Ooh, Kratos the then escapes Hades so through cool. a gate and encounters Helios, whose head Kratos proceeds to rip off. Oh, he so then gross. encounters Hermes, who he kills, and later his own half-brother Hercules, whom he also kills. Kratos meets with Aphrodite and her husband Hephaestus in order to find their daughter okay. Pandora. Side note, that video got me in so much trouble. <laughs> I left it as is, but hot damn. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got an email from YouTube and they were like, nah uh, -uh. <laughs> Hephaestus refuses to lead Kratos to her, however, and reveals that after Kratos opened Pandora's box, Zeus became overcome with fear and forced Hephaestus to reveal to the creation of the key of the box, which later took on a life of its own as a girl whom he named Pandora. Zeus then took Pandora and banished Hephaestus. Kratos urges Hephaestus, who tasks him with retrieving the Amphalo stone in order to make a weapon to allow Kratos to find Pandora. In his attempt to find the stone, Kratos comes across Kronos, who assumes he has tried to kill Gaia, and attacks him. Kratos fights Kronos and eventually frees the temple from the Titan's body before he eats Kratos. Inside his stomach, Kratos retrieves the Amphala stone and cuts his way out and kills Kronos once and for all. That Kratos confronts Hephaestus, who reveals that he was trying to send him on a suicide mission. Hephaestus attempts to feign innocence before trying to kill Kratos instead. Kratos shakes this off and kills him by impaling him on his own anvil before heading off to retrieve Pandora. Kratos' quest takes him to the Gardens of Olympus, where he finds Hera, the wife of Zeus, drunken and belligerent. After making his way through the gardens, Hera confronts Kratos once again, insulting Pandora and causing Kratos to lash out and snap she her was neck, drunk the whole causing game. all plant life to die. Kratos makes it to the labyrinth and finds Diatolus, the labyrinth's architect. Trapped inside, Diatolus claims that Zeus oh. promised him that he would have his son Icarus back once again. he completed the labyrinth. Kratos reveals that Icarus was in fact dead before activating a trap and killing the architect. Inside the labyrinth, Kratos finds Pandora well, and takes goodness. her with him. Okay. In the flame of Olympus's chamber, Kratos raises the labyrinth to access Pandora's um, body. If you guys haven't watched the finale for God of War, I will uh, link it above. Uh, for God of War 3, sorry. We fought a, a scorpion. <laughs> I have arachnophobia. It was... If something has more than four legs, I can't handle it, you guys. It, 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 it 
ugh, it makes me itchy. Even thinking about it right now is too much for me. And anyways, that that was horrible. I hope we don't relive that ever again. I never want to see another creepy crawly in a video game. I'm done. I'm I'm starting a petition. Box. However, Kratos refuses to let Pandora sacrifice her life <laughs> as he does not want to cause her death as he did his own daughters. She chooses to embrace her fate, however, and breaks free, only to be stopped by Zeus. Zeus mocks Kratos for showing care for Pandora as if she was his own, and tosses her aside before engaging in battle with his son once again. During the battle, Pandora Epic attempts to run battle. into the flame in order to put it out before Kratos grabs her to stop her. Pandora pleads with Kratos to let her seal her fate, and Zeus provokes him by telling him not to fail Pandora like he did his own family. Kratos reluctantly lets her go, and the flame of Olympus is extinguished. In the wake, Kratos opens Pandora's box once again, only to find that it is now empty. Zeus mocks his son once again, and the two meet outside and gaze upon the destruction Kratos has caused. The two are interrupted by Gaia, however, and she tries to kill them both. The two then enter a wound in Gaia's chest and fight beside her heart, draining the life out of it. Kratos, powered by the heart of Gaia, then impales Zeus into it with the Blade of Olympus, finally killing both Gaia and his father Zeus. Awakening upon a broken earth, Kratos Titan. finds Zeus's body and retrieves Same the blade. Time. However, as he tries to leave, Zeus's spirit attacks Kratos and drains him of his anger and willpower, replacing it with fear and loss, the forces that plagued his father. Trapped in his psyche and once again being tortured by his memories, the spirit of Pandora appears and helps Kratos abolish these torments through hope. Kratos returns to the physical world and forces Zeus's spirit back into his body. Kratos then charges him and beats him to death with his bare hands, finally killing him and destroying Olympus for good. For me, that was a never-ending sequence. Afterwards, Athena appears once more and congratulates Kratos, asking him to turn over the power he found inside Pandora's box so she could finally give it to mankind. Kratos laments that the world is destroyed, and anything she would have to give would be useless. More so, the box was empty, and Kratos believed Pandora had died in vain, simply another casualty in his quest for vengeance. Okay, pausing it. So, we watched, I watched the IGN trailer just before this one, and now I'm watching this one. Now, now we got two different ideas of Athena. IGN believed that Athena wanted the power of hope for herself so she can rule. However, Suggestive Gaming's perception of it was what I, what was my perception of it. That she was just wanting to give hope back to mankind, not essentially to rule for herself, but because she wanted something better for mankind. So now I'm still torn on two different versions of Athena. Is Athena a bad god? And you guys can definitely like go at it in the comments. <laughs> um, I'm definitely interested to hear what your opinions are, but is she a good god? Where she always wanted mankind to thrive and not serve the gods forever, and she wanted them to have their own lives. And so from the very beginning, she knew that this was the only way to release mankind from their servitude to gods and just out of the kindness of her heart, she wanted to do that for, for man, for humans. And she knew Kratos was her, her way to do that and she, and she wanted to give hope back. Or, which is what I thought, or is she the most manipulative god and mastermind in the entire God of War franchise and she's the one who for, foresaw or what well, I guess listened to the prophecy that said that she that uh, somebody would dethrone Zeus and this was her opportunity and now she can take this power of hope and use it in order to control mankind still and dangle it over their heads so they can serve her instead of Zeus. Now I'm still confused. Which Athena is she? Athena reveals to Kratos that when the evils of the Titans were first sealed into the box, she placed the most powerful weapon in the world beside them to counteract them, the power of hope. Athena had initially believed that when Kratos opened the box for the first time, all of its evils had transferred unto him, and hope was lost, when in actuality the evils went to the gods on Olympus and hope was buried deep in Kratos under his pains. Only upon forgiving himself was the power able to release inside of him. Kratos, realizing he has nothing left to live for, impales himself with the blade of Olympus, freeing the power of hope into the mortal world. Athena is angered by this and tells Kratos that she is disappointed, to which he responds with a final laugh before she removes the blade, leaving him to die. Sometime later, we see the mural where Kratos' body once was, now abandoned, with nothing but a trail of blood leading to the Great Sea. Yeah, I guess she was disappointed that he gave it back to mankind and she said they wouldn't know what to do with it, but that still doesn't say exactly that she wanted it all for herself. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, I don't know, I want to believe in the good. The entire time in the game, they really made you think that she was good, unless maybe I'm the fool and I was manipulated. I don't know, Athena's such a mystery to me. ...that now envelop the world. All right, that was wild. Um, so now that I have a bit more of a backstory about Kratos, you guys, um, I feel even worse for him. 
I think that the moral of not really the moral, but I would say the common theme in the God of War franchise is betrayal. And I feel bad for Kratos. And in fact, I don't actually think he's a monster. After watching all of this, I love him even more than I did um, in 2018. A lot of you said, oh, you're not going to like him. He's a monster, but he's not a monster. He's a poor, broken man who, or demigod, I guess we could say, who's just broken because everything that he's ever wanted in his life has been ripped away or loved actually has been ripped away taken from him in the most brutal ways starting with his brother because of the gods then leading to his family and um then he wanted to take his own life and he couldn't even do that because of the gods and at every step he was betrayed he was betrayed by the furies he was betrayed by the gods he was betrayed by the titans um it just doesn't end so i can see now a hundred percent why he hates gods and i can see now why he was upset to know that Atreus actually has uh, god powers, um, to which we still don't know because we're about to go into Ragnarok. So I'm very excited to see what those are about. I'm very excited to get back to Boy <laughs> and the Kratos that we know in uh, 2018. I think that he has really harnessed hope in 2018. I find that he must have been able to harness that ability of hope when he started a new life with um, Faye, I think her name was Faye, his wife. Obviously he moved on and then they had a child and then he sees hope in Atreus. So actually I think the story is so beautiful and I think that yes, it's told in the most gruesome, disgusting, very inappropriate way <laughs> for God of War 1, 2, and 3. It was very inappropriate. <laughs> but uh, yeah, at the end of the day, I think it's actually a really sad but beautiful story about um, a man who who just at the end of the day loved his family and would do anything to protect them and rid himself from his failures at keeping them safe. I kind of think that's what the God of War story was about. And I think it's beautiful. So yeah, I'm happy we watched this. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the reaction video. It was a lot of me just being like, huh, because there was a lot to process. They went fast. There was a lot of information, but I think I have all the knowledge I need. Most of my questions are answered still a little bit confused about Athena. I don't know. I, I, I still think that I'm torn on whether Athena is a shithead and she's been, ch she wanted to take over this whole time or if she was actually the only person that really believed in Kratos and wanted to help us. So I don't know, still torn. Athena is a confusion for me. Um, but I definitely want to hear what you guys think about Athena in the comments. And yeah, without further ado, we are going to get started into Ragnarok. I'm very, very stoked. I can't wait to play. I have been waiting for this moment for a couple months now. So yeah, I will see you guys all again in the next episode. Until then, see you guys later. Bye. Thanks for watching.